Yeah. I honestly think the librarian man may jump at this opportunity. He may be like, are you hitting on me? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. Andy? I'm admiring your outfit. I've noticed people seem to like it when I get dressed up, so I thought, why not lean into that? Yeah, you look fabulous. <laughs> I have few reasons to get super dressed up nowadays so it's really come down to dear shandy it's also worth noting that you for the first time probably ever recognized what the brand of my set probably was and was very proud of that are you embarrassed should i not have shared no this? no i i actually pretty proud that i i i finally got it well you said the store with the sand is what you said it's close enough <laughs> we are doing q a today clearly mm -hmm. shall we begin Michelle. Okay. This first question is from Claire. Dear Shandy, I'm such a fan of your podcast and have decided to take a chance and submit my own question. It's fairly inconsequential compared to some of the other topics you've covered, but I also think a lot of people can relate. I'm 27 years old and very single. I've dated with the help of all the apps throughout my 20s, but have never had much luck finding a long-term partner. I'm a big reader and visit my neighborhood library a lot. That's so nice, especially during this past year. Yeah, that is library. nice. Library. I want to be the kind of person that goes to my neighborhood library a if lot. If I was single, I would want to date this girl. We're just off yeah. the library alone. Yeah, I know. I want to be friends with this girl. Yeah. <laughs> during this time, I have developed a massive crush on one of the librarians, despite having never had a meaningful interaction with him. Amazing. <laughs> I don't even know what the bottom half of his face looks like due to the to our local mask ordinance. Since you like details, and because I'm quite the sleuth, he doesn't wear a ring that I've noticed, although I recognize that he could have a partner or identify as gay or asexual. These are details that I just don't know. I have anxiety and quite an active imagination, which often leads me to developing intense crushes on people without ever acting on those feelings for fear of rejection. I've been single for six years and want to take control of my love life by being more bold in person. I have toyed with the idea of asking him out, but I'm just not sure if it's appropriate. I've witnessed my own coworkers get hit on at work and it usually is very awkward and uncomfortable for them. On the other hand, I don't want to live in my head forever and I think I would regret not giving it a go. I'm wondering, is it ever appropriate to ask someone out if they are at work, particularly if it is the only place you have the chance to interact with them? And if it is, how would you recommend asking them out? Looking forward to hearing your thoughts, Claire. What a sweet question. Her librarian. The hot librarian romance about to start. She, she doesn't even know what half his face looks like. I love this story. This is a good one. Okay, so it's... This has to have a happy ending, so we have to be very careful here. We have to give her perfect advice. Well, let's start with the basics. Okay. I think it's going to be clear what we both say to this. Well, obviously, she has to pursue this. She needs to at least strike up a conversation. 100%. Because he can't hit on her. No, no, he's not going to hit on her. No, That's, but also he's at work. It's in a, he can't it's inappropriate, that. and it's just like it's like winning the lottery. Like, what are the odds that some random person that you have a crush on is going to start hitting on you for no reason? Oh, no, I mean, not necessarily that, but also he's at work. Yeah, there's, he's the one who's agreed. not allowed agreed. to cross that line. Not happening. Yes. So she has to make the first move, mm -hmm. and I suggest as is this is basic standard hitting on one hundred and one. Okay, Andy's good at this. You take it from him. It's like you just ask a serious question that's relevant to something. I mean, ostensibly, and then put something funny behind it. That's oh, it. is that the yeah? Just something something functional, then something light. Could you give an example based on her on, on the library? setting god you're putting me on the spot here i mean i have to admit just for the record while you mull something over yeah you are freakishly good at this and i think our relationship is evidence of this because you did talk me up i landed you you landed Look at this beautifully dressed gorgeous woman <laughs> and Opposite we one time i don't know if you remember this we were at pearl oyster bar and i was like let's pretend we don't know each other you're just gonna hit on me and yeah. then you did it and I could not believe, it was almost disturbing how good you were at it. <sighs> a lot of practice. So now that you've had time to think it over. Okay. So I, I would say that she should um, 
find like a book that's like rare Mm -hmm. and really interesting. And she should make sure that they don't have it there. And then she should go and ask him, like, do you have this book? And he's going to do his whole searching. And and then he's going to say, oh, we don't seem to have it, but maybe we can blah, 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 blah. And that's where she has to think. She has a, she could take a whole week to think of this. I'm not going to insert the light, you know, the, the humor element of this. I, I, I Give me a couple hours, I'll think of it. But she has to insert some library humor at that point. Library humor. Lib- full library humor. Not like, you know, like, you know, a Catskills comedian joke, like set up punchline, like just basic something cute, quirky and funny about the library, about this particular book she's asking about. That's the way to do it. Do you not think that she could also just while looking for a book or choosing a book, just ask him, have you read this book? So it's less like a lie, like something she. In- yeah, but that's uh, that she's hitting on him. Yeah, you but have to, you have to, it has to be a Trojan horse. You have to, it needs you have to be to, sneakier. <laughs> yeah, totally sneaky. You have to make it seem like you are absolutely 100% not intending to hit on this person. You're asking a very legitimate question to a person who's a, in the service industry, whose job it is, is to tell you the answer to that question. And then based upon his response, which you know is going to be, we don't have it. You have prepared something and I'm I'm doing this. Look, this is not the way it should always happen. It shouldn't be so staged. But I'm saying I feel like she needs to have a prepared script because she's very nervous. She has stage fright. She's not good at doing this. She doesn't like it. She doesn't do it in the past. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to get no, her prepared. Yeah, I, I see why you're giving so, like a, such a specific example, because it sounds like she needs it. Mm-hmm. Like she specifically said, how would you do it? The question right. is not just should I do it? I think she knows we're going to say she should. You 100 percent should do it. Yes. No question. You have to do it. <laughs> you have to do it and then do it the way I'm saying. You have to create a s- scenario where he has no what, no clue whatsoever that you're hitting on him. Really? I feel like it's not a bad thing if she makes it relatively clear. No, it's just, it's just better. For me, I know that when I get hit on by a stranger, I prefer it if it's clear that I'm being hit on because then I know how to categorize it and how to move forward. And whether or not I'm interested, you, I can either flirt back or kind of put on the brakes so that I'm like, eh, this is... Yeah, but you're you. This girl clearly has a phobia or like fear of doing this. I'm trying no, to... No, I'm talking about when I'm on the receiving end. I would prefer it when I'm being hit on for it to be clear that I'm being hit on. Right. I don't I, like the nebulous I, chatter. I, eh. I think most women would agree with me, by the way. First, you're a woman, first of all. Yes, He's and which I reckon... So, so let's... We recognize that it is a man, librarian... I'm thinking from what she doesn't I, know his sexuality. So who knows? Maybe this is all moot. I'm thinking from what I would if I was this librarian, this is what would work with me. OK. Basic straight man. OK. Me. There's two things at work here. One is you want to create a scenario which feels natural and that, you know, he can roll with. You want to create a scenario that also makes her very comfortable and doesn't feel like she's like going right into the attack Mm -hmm. because she's scared. She's nervous. Mm -hmm. She's very shy about doing this. That's what she said. Yes. So you don't want her to just go right and be like, hey, how you doing? Ready for some dating? (laughs) It's got to be subtle. It's got to be like she's got to feel like it's natural. It'll make her more comfortable. It'll make her operate better. Okay. I, I respect that advice. Yeah, I'm not giving this advice to just anybody. This is, this, this is specifically bespoke for bespoke advice. Bespoke. We only ever give <laughs> yes. bespoke advice is, here. <laughs> there's no off the rack advice here. Yes. Except for people who have boyfriends who are terrible. <laughs> hit the road. And then we're really predictable. It's pretty, pretty one size fits all at that point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just hit the road. So think of a book that doesn't exist in that library. Ask him if he has it. He's going to say no and have a absolutely bang up response ready spend a whole week thinking about it i feel like you're missing the real key element to this advice which is the funny thing it has to be funny it doesn't have to be funny it should be funny i do think that's part of your magic when it comes to hitting on people i make it sound like you hit on people all the time which is not true but it's the humor. It's the sense of humor. I think a lot of people sort of miss the mark on that, either mm-hmm. unintentionally, like they don't realize that humor is an integral part of that flirtatious exchange. Yeah, it breaks or the Or they don't 
think it's necessary. It's 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 not necessary. I think it's but necessary. If you, if, I mean, it's you can I don't think you can flirt without humor. I I'm just gonna say. I it. agree. There's. I'm cer- going on the record saying I, that. I I agree. There are certain situations where maybe you can get away with it, but most of the time you're gonna want to break that wall down, and the best way to do that is to get the person laughing, okay. or at least chuckling, or at least smirking. So, is our advice for Claire be funny? <laughs> Be funny, but I'm telling you, like, I never would say this because I hate people going in with prepared game. It should be very spontaneous Mm -hmm. and like right on the spirit, you know, just go with what you feel and be real. But she has she's shy. Yeah, she needs her hand held a bit in this. Yeah. This, I, clearly, she wrote into a podcast. So I, I think that's a, a good bare bones formula. She's a huge advantage. She knows where this guy's going to be every day. She knows totally. she's going to be there every day. It's not like there's somebody in like a coffee shop and you're like, oh my God, I'm never going to see this person again. Okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? No, it's like she can spend every night thinking, okay, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to do this. It's a cheat. He's yeah. there every day. Okay, so here's the question. Let's say she asks for the book. He says no. She makes some sort of remark that's kind of funny. And they kind of have a little exchange back and forth. Does she call it a day on that and come back after, she, you know, a week later, two weeks later when she's back at the library and resume okay. that? Now, or now, she... now we're going to this is this is step next, two. Yes. OK, so she has to keep the banter going. She can't back out and be all like, oh, OK, like get nervous and leave. She has to keep the conversation going, keep it light, then ask his name. And introduce herself, get to that point. you got to get to that point in the first conversation and then part. And then she has to think of a thing that she has. What? This is how, this, look, I, okay, you want, okay, fine. You want to just give her, yeah, no, go in there and be cool no, and get a no, date. No, no, no. Like, what you, I'm I, giving I, her. You know what? Maybe I underestimated the craftsmanship. Have some respect. This yeah, maybe craft. I under. This is not just. I it's, estimated it's not how, how complicated and nuanced what you do. What I did. I did. I'm retired. <laughs> So, okay, so she's established that she, if if not interested in him, is at least someone who's friendly and there's, she's broken, she's, she's elevated herself from the standard, like, anonymous library customer yeah. to something, some next level. She's at level two now. Okay. People that he would be like, hey, how's it going today? Oh, As that's opposed true. to like, can I help you? So, so that's good. Then she has to think of something that she has that she can ask him to join her for that's not like super romantic or obviously like I'm asking you on a date. And again, this is bespoke. This is for her. This is for her. And this can apply to many people. But I'm saying for people who are really like there's a lot of there's a hill to climb over to Mm -hmm. get to where they need to be. This is a good plan. Create familiarity through humor. (laughs) <laughs> preferably under the guise of something you actually made believe that you needed and then think of something not like hey you want to go get coffee sometime again this could apply to many situations but not hers yes think of a thing like a know, some a book reading or like a some i don't know some speaker a, a restaurant a TED opening talk, a restaurant opening her friend has a bar and they are an outdoor thing i don't know something and just say you want to come I'm impressed with you. Oh, thank you. I am. I, yeah. it's, you know, I, I do think I underestimate just what goes into it. I'm trying to think the times in my life I've gone and asked a guy out. And I'm not sure I put that much thought into it, if I'm honest. But I, I think it's artful. I'm impressed. Thank you. I do think things are different right now. Like she doesn't have her whole face showing. He doesn't have his. It's You're missing out on so much material in terms of nuance and response Mm -hmm. like you a little smirk on the side of your mouth can show interest or disinterest and you're just missing so much of the equation it's tough she's working against a lot of factors right now but i really admire this crush and the fact that she wrote about this and i just think it's the cutest question It's it's good and claire i hope you take andy's advice i don't feel comfortable giving advice on how to hit on him in the situation. I feel like mine's really basic. Knowing me, based on my history, I would go up to him and say, hey, I've seen you around. Yeah, but you're sure. I think joint. you're cute. Like, do you want to get a drink sometime? I would just do that. You're like, a, you're like, it's like a nuclear weapon. It's not fair. What do you mean? You're dealing with it. You're, you're, you've got 
it's too much. What does that mean? It's too easy for you. No, you don't know that. Mm, I know that. <laughs> it's too easy for you. You say that as my bias. You could husband. go to a guy and literally be like, hey, um, what are you doing tonight? You want to get a drink? And he'd be like, yes. I think what people often forget, unless, you know, she said her friends get hit on at work and it makes them un- uncomfortable. I think people forget that if you do it in a non-invasive, friendly, kind of funny way, in a way that doesn't feel creepy. It's all about the creep factor to me. I've been hit on many times and I was just flattered. Even if I wasn't interested, even if I was repulsed by the actual human doing it, I was flattered by the the effort. I know what it takes. It's It takes balls yeah. to go up to someone and put yourself out on the line, the line of rejection. You're really putting yourself in the line of fire of yeah. rejection. And I, and I hate, 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 by the way, when people shoot that down hard in a way that humiliates the person that made the effort. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. But a lot of people do that. And I've had girlfriends do that where you're out and some guy gathers up all his courage and comes over and then you're and some people are like why are you talking to us that kind of thing and you're just like uh just you can shut someone down in a way that does not make them feel small and unworthy and i think that if you take your tactic which is to say again humor light for me personally i prefer it if it's made clear that i'm being hit on but i can see why you're not going that direction based he, on her personality he's a, first of all he's a, he's a guy in the his service he's like a he's working at a place it's his job you yeah. don't want to come too heavy even if you're like super confident in this situation you want to come a little just pull back a little bit and it's funny you say that because the time in my life where i was a bartender yeah i did get hit on a lot in that setting and Shocking. it was my least favorite time to get hit on Mm. even versus being a waitress i got hit on being a waitress but i didn't mind because i could physically leave the area right, you're stuck there yeah i could keep busy and sort and of people are yelling at you about drinks and this guy's like hey so do you like well, it's uh, not even that. you're physically trapped i felt like a caged animal yeah, Whereas yeah, the yeah. bar is a certain size no, you not. have to be in that area to work and then if someone's just not leaving you alone and leaving the area where you're trapped it can feel invasive I, I, but I, I don't I'm not respect, getting that vibe from this. No, I, don't <laughs> I, I don't feel like the librarian man is no based on the vibe I'm getting. I honestly think the librarian man may jump at this opportunity. He may be like, are you hitting on me? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It's delicate, but for, I do think that one person might feel violated, but the, the next person might feel really flattered and it could make their day that you showed any interest in I mean, them, whether I mean, or not they reciprocate the it. Guy, the guy's working a library. I mean, it's, how how upset is he going to be that a girl's hitting on him? He's probably going to be okay with it, <laughs> my guess. Yeah, and in general, I think the in-person hit on, as a noun, is underrated. It's going out of style, but for not for good reason. It's did, going out of style did, because of inter- of online dating, but that's a horrible reason for it to go out of style. Did, this may, Claire, keep it in style. This, this could be one of the great all-time in-person COVID hitting-ons. This this could be it. Hitting's on? Hitting's on. Hitting-ons? Hitting-ons. <laughs> I think maybe they both, they're both wrong, but they both work. I'm curious to see if it works, like that first moment where they like, you know, sit down and he like takes, he's like, takes his mask off. It's like slow motion where he's like, <laughs> da, 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 da. and as she sees his face it's going to be like a like a like out of a movie most importantly i think this is a good exercise for you claire i'm looking at you now i think it's a good exercise i think it's good for people to go up to strangers and engage in conversation with them it's all too rare in general because of everything online but even more so because of the pandemic and i just think it's so unlikely that this would end badly and i don't even mean in the sense that ending well would be that they're married one day just having this interaction with a stranger at a library like he's a librarian she loves going to the library you already have this unique also going out of style Mm -hmm. thing in common it's just it's a it's a beautiful little exchange between two strangers that may or may not lead to romance that should be acted on instead of not and then regretted and always wondered about. And by the way, he has the keys to the library after hours. So some crazy <laughs> shit could go down <laughs> if she if she plays her cards right in the uh, history section. 
Or maybe maybe the uh, geography section. Why geography? Or the human human biology section. Ooh. That's more appropriate. Okay. Do you think yeah. we answered that I one? I think we're good. But I, I really, I, I, I have to insist, and I'm speaking to her, Claire, I insist that you do this. Don't, you, you could get hit by a bus next week and you will have never hit Or he could guy. get hit by a bus. Both of you could be hit by a bus at the same time. He could be at working at the library because he lost his job during the pandemic and he could be, as things go back to normal, as everyone says, which may or may not happen anytime soon, but he may not work there next week. Or tomorrow, some girl who's been plotting this for, for a month <laughs> may go up and land the perfect pickup line. And that's it. That's the end. Do you think instilling a sense of urgency will help or hinder Claire? I don't think she's going to be any more or less stressed whether she does this this week or a month from now. True. Just do it now. Okay. There's no no time to waste. Okay. Claire, I doubt this is surprising. Shandy says go for it. Emphatically. Yeah. And Andy has given you a basic, but I think usable roadmap. But good luck coming up with the really funny thing. Yeah. Two I'm not out, envious there, of that task. There's, there, yeah. Let's As just, a non-funny person, she can take I don't a whole week. She can take a whole week. She can hire joke writers. Or, but, or she could just see how it goes. Wait. To me, you know compatibility with a person when, you, when it comes naturally. Yeah, but I, yeah. to, to have humor in your exchange. Let's not get crazy. You've got to have a prepared <laughs> material ready. I want an update mm -hmm. in two weeks. <laughs> No pressure, Claire. All right, moving on. This next question is from Jay, as in the letter. Hmm. Dear Shandy, I'm a new listener and I appreciate your honest, sometimes rambling takes on relationship advice. <laughs> what? There's no rambling here. But I don't know. That caught me off guard. <laughs> <laughs> rambling but takes. she said it in a positive yeah, way yeah it's meant as a compliment there's nothing wrong with a good ramble yeah nothing wrong with it my, my, I, that, I guess I just didn't see it coming and usually the opening paragraph is just pure compliment and I was prepared for a pure compliment and instead I got a a not pure yeah. compliment I really enjoy your terrible podcast <laughs> here's my situation which I'd love your thoughts on I'm in a happy three year old relationship which I think is defined by our maturity and open communication we were previously both in very long relationships, seven and 10 years, and have also both been through our share of therapy. So there were a number of very shiny green flags along the way in terms of building trust, communicating our needs, dealing with conflict, all things I couldn't be happier about. I also just adore this man. There is one issue which I'm worried about, which we have discussed several times already, and I'm worried that I'm overthinking it perhaps being overly neurotic and unreasonably insecure. And that is the issue of children. I am very ambivalent and don't really have a desire for children. He has been quite strong and consistent that he has never wanted children. And yet, I keep asking. The reason is that he is several years younger than me. I am 38, he is 33, and I worry that he might change his mind in 10 years when it is no longer an option for me. He hasn't denied that this could be a possibility, but has insisted that, quote, he's not with me for my womb, unquote, and that if we both want children later, we can adopt. We both find natalism equally ick. So really, isn't this the perfect answer? So why do I struggle to just accept this answer? Do men have a midlife clock that kicks in once they're in their 40s? Or am I just projecting what I think might happen with me? What do you think the chances are that people change their views on becoming parents between their 30s and 40s? Hmm. I feel for you, Jay, and I, I relate to this a lot. I relate to the sort of overthinking and thinking logically and thinking in terms of likelihood. It's like, well, he's 33 now, but in 10 years, you know, that kind of thing. I, I understand going down that path. And I think this happens in every relationship with, and it could be about this, but it could be about anything, really. You have to actively sort of shut the door on that outside noise and kind of trust, trust in the person that you've chosen to partner with. Well, I was going to say, when they like, tell you something, she's, she's been with him for three years. Everything's great. Like what's, what is, what has the pattern been up to this point? You're right. They've been together three years. She has enough data. Yeah. There's enough history to work with here. 
Yeah. Has he said one thing and then changed his mind consistent? two years later? Yes. Is he consistent? Does he seem like he's mature to the point where he knows what he wants and he's he's stable that way? Mm-hmm. Um, I think we don't know that. She knows that. And she should really take from that database and make a determination. Years, over the course of six months, you could watch something in someone and be like, three years is she knows him. Yeah, she I, knows this man. I think so. And, and despite, despite him being three years short of being a full-grown man, <laughs> I, I have faith that this isn't going to become a problem. Yeah. Jay, there comes a point where you need to trust in your partner more than you look for reasons why not to, I guess. Because ultimately, this does sort of feel like even if you, you're not trusting what he's saying now, you're not trusting that he won't change when he is himself and he's telling you it's possible he'll change but then you'll cross that bridge when you get there and cross it together you just sort of have to have a little more faith i think think more faith in him and more faith in the relationship because if they've made it this far with only green flags shiny Shiny, green flags yeah i was picturing those i know me too it was very vivid shiny green flags blowing in the wind yeah i think that you know she she has to take stock of you know, how well they've done so far and how 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 solid a, a relationship they have. Do men have a midlife clock that kicks in once they're in their 40s? Do you think that happens? I don't really think that does happen. I think it happens with... Correction. I think that happens with some men. I think it happens a little bit with wife. I don't know about... Wife? Kid, with wife. Wife. A wife, you mean? Uh, with the category of wife. <laughs> Yes, a wife or multiple wives. I'm not sure what state he lives in. Yeah, I think that maybe when you hit 40, you start thinking like maybe I should actually stop, you know, just Fucking sleeping around. around and find a wife. In my experience, and it's not like I have so much experience, but I have a reasonable amount of experience. Men in at 30 know they want kids one day. Do you know what so. I mean? Yeah, I think so. They usually have an idea. If, even if it's not, I definitely want kids. It's like, yeah, I'm open to kids. I, I think kind of pictured myself I, having I agree kids. with you. A guy at 33 who's like really adamant about like not caring about kids mm-hmm. probably is going to stay that way. Most likely. Yeah. I think. You never know. But I, I think to suddenly at 40 be like, oh, mayday, mayday. Everything I've believed is wrong. You don't change that drastically. No, I agree. I, th- I think she's creating worry where there shouldn't be. I think that she should just relax. Don't worry about it. If you really, really want to have like a, a safety net, freeze your eggs, I guess. I mean, the title of the email is, am I being annoyingly neurotic? So she's aware <laughs> that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can we just, should we have just started with yes and then moved on? <laughs> yeah, she's aware that she's overthinking this and. All Shandy can do. I just spoke of, of Shandy in the third person, which You're is allowed annoying. To. You've made it that far. But all we can do is really tell you that based on what you've written here, I think you were being a little too neurotic. Yeah. Enjoy your great green shiny yeah, flag relationship. Stop, yes. stop worrying about this. Is you're worrying about hypotheticals that might not happen for many years. Who or knows? at all. Who, yeah, most, most likely, likely, not likely at won't all. ever happen. And if they do happen, it'll be happening in many years. Who knows where you'll be? There's mitigations for that mm-hmm. you can adopt. And there's not enough living in the moment happening here. No. And, and again, trust. When someone tells you who they are Cons- or yeah. what they want or don't want, believe them. Mm-hmm. You've chosen this man. You've chosen to partner with him and you adore him, to use your own word. Trust th- your instinct in all of that. Yes. Okay, Jay. Good luck. This next question is from Laura. In Vienna. Wow. Yeah. Is she Viennese or is she just in Vienna? It says, hello from Vienna. I'm going to guess she's Viennese. <laughs> Either way, international, which we're into. Mm-hmm. Dear Shandy, first things first, I love your podcast and just wanted to express how much I appreciate and enjoy listening to it. Pure compliment. <laughs> I love how you always read the compliments. It's, it's good. I like it. I, like I mean, it. if we're if we're not going to enjoy our little compliments, what why, else is there? There's nothing. I mean, we're not making enough money doing this to just not enjoy our compliments. I agree. At this point, we're getting paid in compliments. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Keep the compliments coming. Each Thursday, I am really looking forward to the new episode, and it always makes me smile. 
So thanks to both of you and also for all the work it must entail. Thank you, Laura. It is a lot of work. Thank you. I feel appreciated. Oh. So my question. At first, I wanted to talk about the last guy I dated, which happened quite some time ago. As a really bad online dater, COVID certainly did not help me in that department. Or at least that's my excuse, smiley face. But I realized that although the rejection I received from that particular person hurt a lot and still does, even after over a year, an underlying problem, or maybe even the underlying problem, is my, let's call it, academic failure. And that's in quotation marks. Hmm. That was a very long sentence. Seriously. <laughs> for, a, for a native Viennese, that was impressive. <laughs> impressive run on. Did you follow that? Uh, for the most part. Yeah, I, th okay. I think she'll fill in the blanks okay. in the next few sentences. You, you're right. She does. Okay. I enrolled in university at 18, like most people do. But as I was not really sure what I wanted to do, as I had just too many interests, I kind of started two different studies at the same time and also part-time working, which kind of took over. In the last 10 years, academically speaking, I did a lot of interesting projects and things. I went to China, studied in Italy for a year, I worked for a professor at university, etc. But also, due to family issues that were time intensive and kept me busy for a couple of years, taking care of elderly grandparents, for example, I still am nowhere near finishing my law degree. Just as an addendum, here in Austria, study fees are not really that high. Only about 400 US dollars a semester. Are you kidding me? What? Wait, so oh, that makes I could me go angry. get a law degree and spend three years in Vienna <laughs> for what I would pay for like, like a guitar? Ooh, and Laura, if you don't want us to go off on a tangent, you shouldn't give us specific numbers about how much cheaper education is in other countries. <laughs> oh, this so is bad. Rough. This is taking this to in a dark place. Yeah, oh, we're pissed right now. Four hundred dollars a semester for law school. Law school in Vienna. Vienna, we've been doing it wrong. Oh my God, we really have. Yeah. Should we just go practice <laughs> law in Vienna? I'm you, you tempted. You speak German. Not very well. Do you have any interest in law? Not particularly. But I, I, I do. I have some interest. <laughs> let me so, let me get through the. Oh email. right, right, right. Four hundred U.S. dollars a semester. So that's why I could afford being an eternal student, as I have worked over thirty hours a week in a law office for the last thirteen years. However, mostly as a secretary, I haven't been totally slacking, but not achieved anything I'm proud of on an academic level or could be comparable to the other people at thirty-two. So that's the long intro to the relationship question now. Do you think men care about a woman being successful or is that more in my head? I know I am not a bad catch. I certainly have my qualities and sometimes am even considered funny. But I guess I always felt that I would only be ready for a long-term relationship once my professional career would be sorted instead of feeling inferior to potential partners in some ways. Do you think I should just totally put the idea of dating on the back burner until I finally figure out my career path? Or do you think that I'm turning this into a much bigger deal than necessary? Thank you so much in any case. All best from Vienna. Can I just answer? Yeah, it's. I think it's going to be. She's turning it into a much bigger deal. Than yeah, it needs to yeah, be. Laura, you're done. turning this into a much bigger deal than you should. Yeah. If there's one thing I've learned at this point in my life, it's that no one has their shit together. Mm -hmm. Even if on paper they have the career that you envy, they did law school in the correct amount of years at the correct ages and did everything in the way that you think represents academic success and professional success something will be missing it's just fact no one has all has yeah, their shit together i agree and so stop comparing yourself to something that literally doesn't exist and and also i might add that a lot of men don't really care they you, just want to find a woman who's they like to spend time with and makes them happy yeah, and who laughs at their jokes and who they have fun with. Yeah, they're attracted to, they laugh with, they I, go on little trips with. They A lot of men don't really I'm going to make a sweeping statement about genders <laughs> in <laughs> relationships. I think women care a lot more about a man's professional and occupation and success professionally than men care about that in women. I'm not saying that applies across the board, but I think I have many male friends that have dated women who were high-powered lawyers and then dated a yoga teacher after that and then mm -hmm. someone who was 
going back to school and didn't know what they were doing after that. I just think that that is more, they consider that more of a work in progress. They don't really, I think that I don't think is a major factor in whether or not they choose to spend time with a woman. I couldn't agree more. And that might catch flack for saying that. I'm glad I, know I didn't sweep. say that. I just, <laughs> I just agreed. You what? I'm glad I didn't. I just agreed with you. I didn't say it though. So I get off you the hook. You do agree with me or you don't agree? I do agree with you. But you didn't want to but say it. But I didn't it. say it. <laughs> uh, I mean, is that too sweeping? A, I, this No, that's not even... It's it's true. It's not sweeping at all. I mean... It might be sweeping, but I don't think it's rooted in not truth. No. I, <laughs> I started that sentence wrong. I'll take... Double negative. No. But you, you knew what you, I meant. You do a mean double negative. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll take it even a step further, and 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 I, I'm not endorsing this, and it's not me, but I know a lot of guys who prefer, really, a woman who's like not really got her shit together. <laughs> Is that bad? Doesn't have. I mean, her it's shit not together. me. I'm just saying I know of it, and it's wait, not. It's not uncommon. Wait, that's something they look for. No, they don't look for it necessarily, but they kind of prefer that to someone who's really like professionally on solid footing. I mean that becomes a different conversation but I think it's 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 ignorant um to ignore that the fact that that does exist yeah whether it's good or bad it's not it, you know no, that's it's, another debate but it exists and it exists in spades a lot of guys are intimidated and turned off by a woman who's very successful and has her shit totally together you're definitely not like that and no, I love that about I'm you not like that. but I actually do think you're right and I actually and again, I might catch flack for this. Think that the men who are, are like that actually are not necessarily bad partners. I don't think that that represents some weird power gender dynamic. I think that they no. just sort of are more interested in a woman who will be a great mother to their children one sure. day. Like there's just more of a traditional gender roles pursuit it, it, there. It becomes, I agree, it becomes bad when the guy literally puts his foot down when yeah. the woman tries to like, says like, oh, I want to be a lawyer or I want to yeah. pursue yeah. this career. And he's like, no, you're a mother and you're a homekeeper. Yeah, that's is real. A, I mean, again, that's, that's definitely a different conversation. Right. But in this case, I, I think you're making a problem where there isn't one, Laura. Yeah, I, I agree. Especially since you sound like the last thing from aimless and lazy. You know, she was writing in, this is yeah. something she's self-conscious about. It's something she clearly thinks a lot about. And it's not like in those years where she wasn't pursuing her degree she was doing nothing she's not lazy no she's went she's, and lived in other countries and has had all these jobs yeah, and experiences she's doing a lot of stuff she's not lazy she's not just sitting around moping yeah like it, there's nothing about what she's done that's unattractive even to a guy who's interested in a woman who's kind of like you know an achiever she's been an achiever at life oh it's true yes that's not that's cheesy i know but it's true it's she's true. gone and lived in other countries most likely learned other languages or started to learn other languages, had these experiences, they're just, it's kind of apples and oranges. It might mean you're not making the same amount of money at 32 that you would have been had you been only focused on your career and not doing those other things. But you have a wealth of other experiences to draw from that those people don't have. Yeah. So I think the consensus is, A, you're definitely overthinking this. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the theme today. Overthinking. Overthinking. Two neurotic questions in a row. Yeah. And B, nobody has their shit together as much as they might seem like they do. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, wait. Why are you saying... Why, don't you... No, I, I, I just... I was agreeing silently. And then I decided to nod. It was not enthusiastic enough an agreement. Uh, no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a medium strength agreement. Okay. Yes. No one fully has their shit together. Yeah. I'm not saying none of their no, shit is together, but yeah. no one's full shits yeah, no, are in the no same place. No one has a complete <laughs> pile of, of shits. Yes. That's right centered. Together. Yeah, a nice tight circle of shit. And the third thing is don't underestimate the value of what you have been doing all this time. Mm -hmm. this, I think she needs a bit of a pep talk. And it sounds like she had a specific relationship that led her to this sort of fed an insecurity that maybe was dormant within her. Like I get the sense that it's sort of coming to a head at 32 and it's bothering her. I implore you to shed that Laura. Yeah. It's not going to serve you. You can still pursue your law degree and other academic pursuits, pursue your pursuits. That was really bad, but you know what I mean? 
while dating and and seeing what's out there and and dis- and discovering what you want in a partner because those are actually totally different things. What I want out of my career is really separate from what I wanted out of a partner. Yeah. And continue to want out of my partner. Sorry to talk in past tense, partner. I am your partner. You are, isn't that funny? Partner. Partner. <laughs> partner. <laughs> it's hilarious. The partnership of Joint and Levine. What? No, I was trying to think of like, it's like one of those law firms you see on TV. <laughs> it doesn't sound good. That's a terrible sounding law firm. Joint Levine. It's, they don't go well Levine together. Joint. This is why we go with Shandy. Yeah. Laura, I hope you took that as, a, as the pep talk that it 100% was. Yeah. This, again, is a bespoke answer for the fact that clearly she is not lazy and aimless. If we got the sense that she was actually just getting high every day and sitting on her sofa watching movies or Netflix, if she was Netflix and chilling far too hard. But if she was Netflix and chilling, that would mean she was dating a lot, too. Not necessarily. I thought Netflix and chill is like you're with a person. Oh, really? Do you have to be with someone to Netflix? You thought Netflix and chill was just literally watching Netflix by yourself? Yeah, chilling really hard watching Netflix. (sighs) Did you just teach me? So cute. (laughs) That is the cutest thing. You really come up with gems sometimes. Don't patronize me. Are you saying that it's definitely a couple? So you think like, oh, you had a hard day. Like I'm out with the guys or something and you sit on the couch and watch Netflix. That's Netflix and chill. Maybe I'm taking the name too much at face value, but yes. It's very cute. There's nothing in that expression that indicates that you need someone to do it with. Maybe you should poll our listeners. (laughs) How many think that Netflix and chill is just sitting at home alone watching Netflix? Okay. Netflix is a thing we have. We all have it. And chilling is something we can all do. You do not need someone else to Netflix and to chill. I also have no idea what I'm talking about. I am. I'm enjoying this. This is good. Okay. You guys can tune in and tell me how wrong I am. I assume I'm wrong based on how confident you are. Pretty confident. Yeah. You seem pretty confident. Yeah. Okay. Well, to circle back to my point. It is that she does not seem like the type to Netflix and chill on her own. I Mm -hmm. will specify that. Right. While smoking a joint all day. If she seemed like she wasn't doing anything, I'd be like, maybe put a little more focus on just creating, cultivating the Mm. life that speaks to you and that you want for yourself. This is something that concerns her enough to have gone back to school about and to have written into a podcast about. And it's just something on her mind. I think... Do exactly what you're doing, Laura, and also date. There's nothing to worry about. Go out, date. Yeah, And Netflix and chill with somebody else. That was such a pep talk. Some people need them. Yeah. You needed a pep talk, Laura. Yeah. Stop asking stupid questions. (laughs) It's a terrible thing to say. (laughs) Okay, good luck. This next question is from Holly. Dear Shandy, I'm a big fan and love the podcast. (laughs) Don't laugh at me for liking compliments. Wouldn't it be funny if you actually, none of these compliments were there. You just inserted them in the front of each question. You like have a list of compliments. You just stick in there. That would be so sad. Uh, (laughs) I promise that's not the case. No, I've seen them. I would love your input on the dynamic of my non-romantic relationship with my friend slash former coworker slash former roommate. The situation in detail. I started working for my company and through work met Rose, a co-worker. She had been at the company for a while prior to me joining. We became friends but initially didn't work together. We eventually roomed together for a brief period of time. Before we became roommates, a few co-workers gave me some subtle warnings about rooming together. For example, I love Rose, but just be careful. What is that? Mean? That's such a red flag. Oh God, I don't room with anyone where some random person tells me to be careful. I'm shocked that she wasn't like, why? <laughs> what should yeah, I be careful? Like I, would, I would be asking a lot of details. Yeah. After we roomed together, we actually got along fairly well and continued to be close friends. However, talk about work was problematic as it became an almost daily venting session about oh. how she was being bullied or abused at work by our coworkers, higher ups, etc. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. True or not, I already am not happy I already with this roommate doubtful. situation. <laughs> yeah, and your daily vent session about how you're being bullied and abused, I'm sensing severe victim mentality, but yes. we'll keep going. 
I finally got the story from another co-worker and starting from when she entered the company, Rose was known to be a problematic co-worker who did not pull her weight. And as I had more opportunities to interact with Rose at work, I had to agree. Our work environment is high stress and comes with a large volume of new tasks on a daily basis. Because of this, teamwork is mandatory just to get through the day. I noticed that Rose is very anxious at work and delegates as many tasks as possible to people who work below her ugh, without taking on an equal amount for herself. In a high workload environment, this creates a lot of resentment towards her. In addition, if she receives any not positive feedback, whether from coworkers or higher ups, whether it is about her performance or simply a decision she made, she views it as a personal attack. I remember specifically asking her a few times during her venting sessions if there were any constructive points she could take from the feedback she was given. Her answer was always no. Of course. That closes that case. Mm -hmm. At least she's consistent. Yeah. The conflict. While I do agree that she was not well liked at work and people certainly didn't treat her warmly, I didn't agree with the fact that she was being abused by our co-workers, many of whom are also my friends and I respect. In addition, I never felt she took accountability for her own shortcomings at work. I expressed this to her and she became angry, tearful, and felt I was gaslighting her. Ooh. Oh, wow. Eventually, I decided that it was not worth risking the peace at home to bring this up and decided to leave the responsibility of reminding her to hold herself accountable to her therapist and our higher ups. That was a good call, though, mm -hmm. in the interest of peace at home. Daily event sessions became more of her t talking slash me listening and eventually changing the subject. Fast forward six months, she is now at a new job and moved. We are still friends and during a recent hangout, when the subject of the former job came up, she became tearful and stated she was very hurt by the fact that I didn't believe her, but knew that I was in an odd position. She stated that she was working hard on giving me grace, but that it'll take time. To be completely honest, I was instantly offended. My first reaction was to tell her to keep that grace for herself. <laughs> Don't worry, I didn't actually say that. To be honest, I'm not sure how this friendship will end up playing out. I know. Hmm. Like, is that even a question? Oh, I'll get to the end of the email. Wait, do you have, do you have thoughts? No, it's just... just I don't understand what this friendship is good for. I'm not sure. I, I'd, I'd love to know. Maybe there's some really great aspects of this friendship, but I haven't... I don't know. Okay, I'll get to the end. The question. I assume that if I am in a long-term relationship of any kind and have common social circles with someone, there may come a time where that person and I have differences in opinion about a situation that happened to them. Is it okay to tell someone that you disagree with how they view a situation that happened to them? What's that line between tough love and gaslighting? Holly. Okay, I have a big peeve when people use gaslighting incorrectly. You're allowed to state your opinion and for that opinion to not line up with the, per with the person's complaints. Yeah. And that's not necessarily gaslighting. What no. I especially hate is how that diminishes the, the impact of the word gaslighting. Well, she's also, she's also, by saying gaslighting, she's suggesting that this girl has like some, some MO. Totally, like she's yes. She's trying to manipulate her to do something or be some way that she wants. And yes. that's not the case. She's just trying to like be Mediate. honest with her about something that she's been whining and bitching about for months. I cannot stand Rose, yeah, Holly. Rose, Rose kind of stinks. I... To at me, least this, at least our impression from this information, this is not a not yeah, a great friend. We're clearly siding with Holly in this, but I also think there's enough pure examples here that I I believe Holly. I think it's really important that we don't always just side with whoever wrote the email, and I don't think we always have for no, what it's worth. No, we always we usually do. Well, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be one sided. I'm sure if Rose wrote an email, she would paint it a completely different picture. But the big, big thing to me here is what I always point out in my Bachelor recaps, which is the smoke. There's a lot of smoke surrounding Rose. Mm -hmm. She's not liked by anyone. Radioactive. She's radioactive. Every rose has a thorn. <laughs> this, this rose has a lot of thorns. It's all thorns. It's all no, thorns. No rose, She's, thorns. She plays victim. Again, based on this email, we're getting a lot of victim playing. A lot of laziness. Like I kind of, I that's something that really bothers me. I think she's sort of a little bit of a brat. She sounds like a brat. A little spoiled. Spoiled brat. Entitled. Again, based on the email. 
Okay, so the question was, is it okay to tell someone you would disagree with how they view a situation that happened to them? Of course. Yeah. Of course. And a good friend doesn't immediately go to crying and tell you that you're gaslighting them because you don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. It's not gaslighting. No, they should use. value the fact that you went into a confrontational situation in order to try and be really honest with her. It is so much easier socially with friends to just agree and bitch with them. Mm -hmm. And you know, I went through this today with a friend. The friend will not be named. But where I had to say, I don't really agree with how you're approaching right, that's us. what a good friend does if you and just yes them awkward. to death yes. and you totally disagree with them then what's the point of the friendship yeah and the fact that rose seems to want that in a friendship means that she also will not be a good friend in return a good friend not only values that but would give it back to you it's clear what rose values is to be agreed with mm -hmm. sided with I would have, if I was Holly, I would have just fought fire with fire every time, like before she even like stepped two feet into the house, I'd be like, oh my God, I got to tell you about my day at work. Oh, I was so bullied, so yeah. abused. Oh, my boss. I tell you, this bitch. <laughs> I wonder how Rose would have liked it. Um, she, she wouldn't, wouldn't have. have. She wouldn't have liked it. No. She would have been like, oh God, is that what I sound like? No, she would have been like, I'm the victim. Yeah, she wouldn't have been that self-aware. Yeah. God, this we're really slamming Rose. I don't feel bad about her. It, from the sound of this email, Rose really possesses a lot of traits that I will admit I in particular cannot stand in people. Mm -hmm. The inability to take responsibility, the inability to see how criticism could be constructive, the in inability to look inwards, to reflect self-awareness, the lack of self-awareness, the inability to recognize how much harder it is for a friend to be honest with you than to just agree with you. Sure. Holly, oh my God. The line between tough love and gaslighting, there is, they're not even in the same universe. And is it okay to tell someone that you disagree with them, how they view a situation that happened to them? Yes, it's okay. In fact, I would say it displays good, sincere friendship. I actually would say it's not okay to not do that. Yes. Yeah, that was right. <laughs> There's Sorry. a lot of double negative. <laughs> not okay to not do that. So it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. Yeah. You and we really love our double negatives. It's strong. It's so interesting how a double negative is so much more powerful than just a positive statement. I agree. Don't know why. I love is. me a double negative. It adds emphasis. It does add some emphasis. I one time got a complaint on my recaps saying that I used too many double negatives. And I was like... Go read other recaps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make a really strong statement based on this email. Oh my God. Are you telling, are you going to tell her to end this friendship? I don't think she should strong. end it because I think it's going to be complicated and dramatic because of who I think. Back Rose away. Is. Back I think away. you just got to do a strong fade. And I don't think it'll be too difficult because I don't think you're getting anything out of this fade, friendship. Fade, fade into the bushes. That's a strong opinion from me. Wow. That's really, that's like even, that. that's, I'm a little taken aback. <sighs> I just, as a woman... In her 30s, I think friendships are really difficult sometimes. The more difficult they are, not necessarily the better it is or the more you get out of it. I think, I think life is short and I don't know if there's enough room in life to have roses. Such thorny roses. No metaphor there. Just people <laughs> named Rose. <laughs> All right, Holly, good luck. This next question is from Miss Hopeful. I like that, when people that, give themselves little names. It's cute. I know. It sounds very ominous, though. It's true. It this does. can only end badly. Oh, don't say that. Dear Shandy, I love you, too, and I listen to Dear Shandy religiously. Even twice or three times the same episode. Wow. Hardcore fan. That's hopeful. Number one fan. Number one fan. Maybe number one Unless fan. Unless there's someone out there who listens to an episode four times. We have to find that person. <laughs> right in if you watch four times. <laughs> we'll reward you somehow. I must preface this email by saying that my first language isn't English, so I'm sorry to say I probably won't be as eloquent as your other listeners. I mean, already that sentence is pretty eloquent. Yes. I'm at the point where I'm incredibly confused. I'm head over heels for my boyfriend. We have been together for almost a year. We met while living abroad in South America. He is 29 and I'm 31. Physical connection is great. Our chemistry is amazing. Our senses of humor are literally the same. I really do see him as my best friend. Aww. But. 
Yes. Oh. And she even wrote, but you knew this was coming. <laughs> Even though our highs are really high, our lows are extremely low. When we get into a disagreement, which is every week, Hmm. we get incredibly nasty. We call each other names. We insult. We hit each other. My God. We are volatile and just plain toxic and abusive. What? It's an old school relationship. It's like an 1800s relationship. Just plain toxic and abusive. I mean, how do I, do I even need to read the rest of this? After everything, when we have calmed down, we always say we have to do better to stop treating each other like this and to try to understand where we're coming from when a disagreement happens. But it doesn't seem like the changes we would have liked to see by now are happening. Yes, some improvements have been made. So sometimes it seems like we're taking few steps forward, but then a huge fight happens again where the same patterns start all over again. And if only we would be able to completely delete everything we have done and said, then maybe we wouldn't be so resentful But because the pain is still there lingering, it's very difficult to not start something else to fight about. We know we love each other. We know what we have to do in order for it not to elevate as much as it does. But it just doesn't seem that we can apply it. It's as if there's this thing possessing us. We only see red and we get into killing mode. The last massive fight we had, we were visiting my home country in front of my family. My sister had to intervene. And he decided to say some things about me to my sister, which provoked me to text his sister and tell her family about his drug problems. Oh, my God. And now, since we involved our family into our relationship, they see how bad we have been for one another. We decided it would be better for him to leave and go to his home country. We decided to take this as our wake-up call to work on ourselves and truly think about how our actions have affected this relationship. We're on a break now, but with the hopes of perhaps meeting up in a couple of months in some other country, if we have been working on ourselves and we will see if we still love and miss each other. I wish she said which countries. My opinion is universal. I'm just sort of curious. Mm -hmm. I am too. After almost two days arguing, we immediately went back to the I love you's, the hugs, the kisses as if nothing happened and I don't want that to be our normal anymore. I love him so much, but this instability is killing me. I'd also like to address in more detail about his drug problems. He's addicted to weed and for some time also addicted to cocaine, which is also something else that has affected our relationship because obviously I want him to not be so codependent on any substance. The problem is that he doesn't see it as a problem. He's very overprotective about his weed consumption because he says weed is healthy and is actually good for him, which makes him believe I'm being manipulative and controlling. And by him saying this makes me feel dismissed and gaslighted. Proper usage. Yes, proper usage. What do you guys think? Are there any hopes for this relationship to work or are we already too screwed? Sincerely grateful, Miss Hopeful. Miss Hopeful, this relationship is over. Yeah. It's over. I actually, I actually, I'm it cons- needs to be over, rather. I'm concerned that it could end in some sort of serious violence. Like it's actually a health concern. This yeah. And especially now that the family members are involved, I think it's a good thing the family members are involved because then you have some accountability because it can be very difficult yeah. to officially quit good point. someone or yeah. something like this. It, it's, the physical violence. I mean, how could we possibly say that this relationship has any hope? Can I be honest, though? The physical violence was the deal closer for me. Mm-hmm. But without the physical violence, my answer is pretty much identical. I agree. We talk about this a lot, the fighting, how it needs to feel productive. Mm -hmm. You're going to fight with your partner. That's completely normal. But don't be fooled into thinking that it's so normal that you just sort of go in this cycle and that all your fights can look the same and not improve. The whole point is to get to a point where you're not fighting in the same way about the same things over and over and over again. And that's not even including the part where they just get as nasty as they are and physical with each other. That's that I'm not even. No, this is not. This is this is over. And I will say this, in theory, this could be somehow salvaged, but it would involve so much therapy and so much work and so much like trigger analysis. It's, it's, it, they, they, okay. The reason I'm saying that is because another, I don't think it's her. I don't want to put all the blame on him. She's definitely partially to blame for sure. But I, he does not sound to me like the kind of guy who's willing to do the work. And no. that's the issue with, that's the issue. 
from well, the and the, the short paragraph at the end about the drugs that's suggests I, that's the part that he I, thinks he doesn't have to change. Right. He's like, I don't have a problem. You have a problem. I don't have a problem. Yeah, yeah. Imagine trying to sit this guy down in couples therapy. I mean, forget about it. This is and this is dangerous, thing. dangerously bad. This yes. relationship. And I don't know if she has a pattern of being in relationships where there's like a lot of physical violence, mm -hmm. but this has got to stop and it can't start again. What's really risky, Miss Hopeful, is that you come to see this as any kind of normal anything. And so hopefully our reaction to this email will show you that this is not normal. It's not acceptable. No. And it's also, by the way, it's only been a barely a year. No, We've been together not, for almost a year. No. I mean, if you think about that first year, this should be they're, they're, great. Yeah, they're barely out of the honeymoon period. <laughs> yes. What's yeah. going to happen after 10 years? No, that's why I'm saying I'm worried that there might be actual, like, serious health problems here. Miss Hopeful, you have nothing to be hopeful about with this relationship. I'm getting upset, honestly, with this one. Yeah. The title of the email is Hopeless or Hopeful. Hopeless. This is hopeless. Hopeless. And dangerous. And, yes. and you deserve better. And maybe he deserves better, too. I don't know who's more at fault for the fights or the violence. But all I can say is that if that's the, the dynamic, then this is not only unhealthy emotionally, it's unhealthy physically and is only going to get worse. Yes. Unless you do hardcore couples therapy. And this guy sitting in a couples therapy session is comical. It's not happening. And I want to make a very important point here. There are certain types of relationships where fighting is a mechanism to create conflict that is then resolved. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the only way that you can feel like this kind of good connection and happiness is to come down off the hill of a fight. Yeah, your high is not high unless you have lows. Right. It's the makeup from the fight that creates this artificial, you know, happiness. High, yeah. And 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 you have and to it constantly is euphoric. Go, I we have both been there. Uh, Miss Hopeful, yeah, we understand how euphoric. Speaking from experience, the coming together us. is. Yes. you you hug and you make up. We're going to be so different this time. It's never going to happen again. And right. then it happens again. If you and if you want to really do some work on this, whether it be with this guy, which we do not recommend, or another guy in the future, watch the trigger. Like what is causing the fight? Like. Are you maybe manufacturing the fight subconsciously? Both um, of them. Is your partner manufacturing the fight subconsciously? Are you really fighting about anything? Did you start the fight on purpose? And do you feel this sense of warmth and delight when the fight is over? Because if that's the case, you have a pattern mm -hmm. and that pattern has to be broken. Mm -hmm. And if that pattern is not broken, this will never end. It will be every relationship is fighting, making up, fighting, making up. But if there was never the fighting, the relationship is kind of dead. Yeah, I'd be curious what there would be left of this relationship if they didn't fight. Mediocre at best is my guess. Because she said the highs are highs, the lows are low. If you get rid of the lows, it's not just highs that are left. I'm sorry. The highs are as high as they are because the lows are as low as they are. Don't misconstrue them. No. The highs do not exist Without, Without the lows. The lows. Yeah. And and there's something that's missing in this relationship. It, I, the, this is the only one I, I have an example of, but I'm sure this is kind of, it happens in their relationship separately in the past and possibly the future. But there's something missing internally or externally. There's something missing in the relationship or there's something missing that they want outside of the relationship. Something is missing and it's huge. Yeah. Otherwise there wouldn't be these fights. Yeah. Or... They're both totally dysfunctional people, mm -hmm. or one of them is totally dysfunctional. I'm guessing both. I hope this isn't the case. Totally dysfunctional people who cannot be in a relationship unless there's constant conflict. And that's that's something that each one of them has, has to, to go to therapy observe for. Observe in or, themselves. I'd or be, do some work. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to go to therapy. I understand that therapy is not for everyone, but... You have to do a lot of work on yourself and say, why do I have relationships where I fight constantly? I kind of wish she had given a little more of her own relationship, uh, both of their relationship history. Yeah. She's 31, he's 29, and this relationship has been less than a year. I assume she has had other relationships. I kind of wish she had said that. This is the first time this has happened to me in a relationship or I have a history of having relationships like this. It's hard to know. But I do know that... The kind of relationship where you do see red when you get in fights, we have both been in those relationships. Mm -hmm. 
and it just simply does not happen necessarily with everyone you're with. And so I just really wish she had given that backstory because I, then it would give us a lot more to work with. Interestingly, either way, this relationship should probably not continue. Then, it, whether this is the first time or it's happened a million times. Yeah. This pattern has to end and this relationship has to end. And who knows, maybe one day in the future, since they both seem to have some, like they both have the same sense of humor, they enjoy each other's company sometimes, maybe one day in the future, they both come together again. They're like, yeah, we both did the work no. and we're ready. Probably I, I not. Just, probably just, not. Probably not. I, people forget that there are there are other fish in the sea. Yeah. You don't need to end up with this person. Yeah. There will be someone else who ticks off the boxes, who you share a sense of humor with, who you're happy with, who you don't have to work so hard to get along with, to not fight with, to not call each other names, to not physically abuse each other. Yeah. I just, this is a question. Okay, all right, we're going to move on. It's clear how we feel. Miss Hopeful, this relationship is hopeless. You wrote in, I assume, wanting a kick in the pants. Move on. Move Ween. on and stop the pattern. Don't do this again. And if you see it happening, move away. Move away. Yes. This is the kind of thing you've got to go cold turkey on. Yeah. You both recognize that this is not healthy. At least there's that. <laughs> it's very, it's a small thing, but at least there is that. There's a recognition. Yeah. Yeah. It's not normal. This is not this normal. This is not normal. Don't let, don't be fooled into thinking it is because it has become normal in your relationship. Yeah. It's not healthy or normal. Not healthy, or safe. not normal, not safe. Okay. Most importantly. Moving on. I got upset about that one. Got worked up. This next question is from Shannon. Dear Shandy, just wondering if you think there's a way back in once you've been friend zoned. I met a super fun guy on a dating app and we also have a close friend in common. This guy is a bit of a nomad. He's a photographer, but he has been staying in our hometown this year. I'm a single mom of two small children. Both of these situations, although completely opposite, did not freak each other out, at least from what he slash we said. I'm independent enough to not let it bother me if we were in a relationship and he had to go on assignment somewhere. He is 44 and never had the opportunity to have kids and welcomes the opportunity to have children in his life as evidenced by all of his photos with his friend's kids. I am not looking for a stepfather figure for my kids. Their actual father is still very much in their lives and he's great. So we met on a dating app and immediately shifted to FaceTime after like two exchanges. We had some great conversation and started talking regularly over the phone for two weeks or so before we decided to meet. Our first date, we went for a walk and a skate in the park. I will admit that when I first met him, I didn't feel much chemistry, but I was attracted to him. He's super interesting and we had great conversations. We see the world in the same way and it's not often that I connect with someone on that level. We kept chatting via te text and phone, shifting briefly into some sexy chat, but nothing too major. We met up for a second date and I spent the night at his place. We made out, but no sex. No great chemistry to start, but as we got going, I thought we were both really into it. Third date, we go bowling and he stays over at my place. More sexy stuff, basically, as soon as we arrive. I thought it was hot. However, later in the evening, he didn't want to get close with me when we watched a movie on the couch, and we slept in separate bedrooms that night. I had to work in the morning, so I thought this would be best, but it was also awkward as fuck at this point. <laughs> In the morning, the goodbye was super awkward, and as I could predict, within two days, I got the let's just be friends text. I actually took him up on his offer to be friends, and we hung out again last Friday, and it was our best date ever, even though it wasn't a date. My question is, is it stupid of me to keep hanging out with this guy? I do enjoy hanging out with him, even without the physical aspect, but I'm still holding on to the hope that he might suddenly realize how awesome I am, and once all the getting to know you jitters are out of the way, he might reconsider. Is chemistry just there or not, or can it develop once you get to know someone better? Thanks, Shannon. Personally, I think she's permanently in the friend zone. It's pretty hard to come back from that kind of exit, especially since it was so official. Like he actually made it official as Which opposed I appreciate, to just fading by the way. into friends. I really appreciate that he. Oh, no, he's very honest. Yeah. But the sitting far away on the couch and then sleeping in separate beds and then like telling her he wants to be friends. Something there was something that wasn't working for. Yeah. Him. And it's, and, it's and very I, hard. I really wish there had been more. Yeah, I would like more detail. But 
Um, I, Last week we got Zach talking about his hot wife thing, and now we just get. I thought it was hot. <laughs> yeah, I thought we'd get more detail from from the ladies, but I guess <laughs> not. So uh, yeah, I would say that the genie is uh, out of the bottle and is not going back in. I I'm a little more on the fence on this with than you, but just like by a hair, mm. just in that because the relationship began on this like on this romantic note, mm. I think that they could get drunk together. Assuming they drink, I don't know if they do, but I feel like under the right circumstances, they could sort of head in that direction again. But it, I'm getting platonic vibes from this overall, and there's nothing wrong with that actually. I think what this could be is a really great friendship, but she has to allow it. She can't sort of, every time she sees him, hope that it's going to turn to something romantic. If it ever does turn to something romantic, it should be a total surprise, like out of nowhere. What I want her to ask herself, based on reading this email, if she really wants something with romantic with him, or if she just doesn't want to feel like she was re rejected romantically by him. And I say that because... You're not getting even the vibe from her perspective that there was a ton there. Like, mm -hmm. you know, she's like, I thought it was hot. There wasn't a ton of chemistry. It just feels sort of like they, they're they sort of trying to find I, their groove. I think she wants to be friends with them, too. I actually think they yeah. should be friends. And I think her ego, and I don't say this critically because I think this is just human. And if yeah. I were in her position, I, I, I would feel the going. same way. Yeah, you sort of want to be chosen. It's like, no, yeah. let me prove to you that you want to be with me, even though I'm not 100% sure I want that with yeah. you. Yeah, there, there's definitely, there's a sense of rejection. Like she wants to right a wrong. Yeah. But there really is just, sometimes there's just not chemistry. There's, yes. It's, not, it's nothing to do. There's probably something really nuanced and, or who knows. The point is, is this guy sounds like a great friend, a good enough friend to tell her mm -hmm. that he wants to be friends. Not and just to fade out and be like, oh, I've got this trip. Uh, I'm going to be away for a few months. Yes. Or like, I've got food poisoning. He's 44. He's a man. He's a man. <laughs> and interesting how when they did go out platonically, it was their best date ever, even though it wasn't a date. No pressure. They're just friends now. Yeah. Great conversation, hanging out. This good stuff. It's hard Stay to know friends. without the details of the actual sexual encounters. But she said, is chemistry just there or not? I personally think chemistry either is there or it isn't, but right. it can be sort of massaged and finagled and you can sort of um, finagle. Did I use that right? Sure. You know what I mean. Finagle chemistry. It's I'm sure. I don't know if it's ever been used in that. <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe finagle chemistry. Why not? You can finagle anything. But personally, I think chemistry for the most part is either there or not, but you, it, it is finagleable. It's finagleable. But sort of like how early sex is not necessarily... It's actually rarely good yeah. sex. Usually the best sex you have is with someone you've been having sex with for sure. a while. Yeah, yeah. So can it develop once you get to know someone better? I think it can. But the vibe I'm getting from this is I'm sort of wondering why she wants this to be romantic. I, th I think she kind of wants to like, as I said, right the wrong. I think she wants to like be That's... like, oh, I can make this romantic again. I think that what has to happen here is appreciate that you may have found a really great lifelong friend. Mm hmm drop the romantic idea from your head but for now for no but permanently until one day when maybe who knows it's the chemistry has been finagled <laughs> and suddenly you're having hot sex like in the bowling alley but uh, don't don't think about it don't go into this every time you see this guy thinking like this is going to be the day this is going to be the that's night. the issue she says i'm still holding on to the hope that he might realize suddenly how awesome i am and once all the getting to know you jitters are out of the he way, he might did, reconsider. He already did realize how awesome she was. That's yes, why they, he wants to be her friend. That's true. He doesn't want to end it. It's a lot to say for that. I would actually say that's arguably a bigger compliment. It's a bigger compliment. He likes her personality. He likes her personality so much. So much. He likes it so much. <laughs> that's actually really nice. You know what it was? He actually... He proposed friendship to her. It was like a proposal. And it was meant like, it. I've decided that as a result of our lack of physical chemistry, I want to make it official that I want to be your friend. But how often when you say, let's just be friends, do you actually hang out the next Friday and I'm have saying. a great time? He's it's not, insane. He's not saying, look, I think we should just be friends. Mm -hmm. He's saying it's a total different tone. It's like, hey, I want to be your friend. Yes. I want and to be friends with follows you. follows up on it, actually follows through yeah. on it. In a way, that's almost more romantic than this romance. I don't know how Romance? That, romance. <laughs> Ro 
Mads. <laughs> <sighs> um, Shannon, I feel like this is it's still a little too early for to to say, if I'm honest. I, I think that you should value this friendship for now and ask yourself if what you really want is just not feel romantically rejected. Because I think that's a separate thing. Who knows? Could be a Harry, it could be like a later life Harry met Sally situation. Who knows? Ten years from now, maybe that'd be hot under the covers. Um, my guess is no. But I predict that 10 years from now, they'll still be hanging out, having a good time. I mean, that's, that's a strong prediction. I'm predicting it. Strong, and I, and I feel good about it. I, I do think, based on this email, romance could blossom belatedly. But, who, but, but she shouldn't think of that. Exactly. Yeah. I think, Shannon, don't, the holding on to the hope thing is the problem here. It's the one thing that stands out as being, eh, why do that to yourself? especially if you do have a great time platonically and you yourself found many little exchanges kind of awkward and a little off. Enjoy this for what it is. And it's really honestly rare yeah. to have someone who you had sex with say, let's just be friends. And you say yes. And then you actually hang out and have a wonderful time. How often does that happen? He, that's what I'm saying. He meant it. He really meant it. He wants to be her friend. It's not just like, oh, let's just be friends. It's like, hey, Let's be friends. I like this guy. I like him. And he likes to bowl. I'm a big guy. I like a good bowling. You know I like bowling. Yeah, Although bowling's recently great. with the pandemic, I might I, yeah. I, I, like even in normal non COVID <laughs> times. We've gone to the bowling alley and then you kind of yeah. like up the door and then circle around and leave with your tail between your legs. For anyone wondering, this actually has happened Several twice. Times. At least two times. I've gone up to the bowling door, looked in, and then be like, I can't do it. Yeah. But even in non-COVID times, I've always had a little bit of a tough relationship with sticking my fingers in those bowling ball holes. And you always have sanitizer on hand, uh, even in non-pandemic times. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, even people without any germophobia, I think, have some reservations about the whole finger in the bowling ball situation. <laughs> All right. Do you think we answered that? I know. I, I mean, I feel very confident that, that she should embrace this friendship and let go of all romantic feelings. And if they happen to crop up sometime in the future, great, but drop it for now. I Just do think that it would serve her best to let go of the holding on to hope thing because I do think if something romantic does happen, it will happen because she completely relaxes that. Yes. She and, lets go of that. And as a cautionary note here, she should not fall into the gray zone where she now is precluding herself from meeting other people and trying to sort of pursue this potential relationship with this guy. That's the worst case scenario, is so, holding out hope for yeah, him in a no. way that you put blinders on for him and it prevents you from actually meeting that's, someone that's who does worst. definitely 100%. That's the other thing. That's is I personally prefer, in a romantic scenario, that the person is sure about you and wants you. Yeah, it has to be. I think it's better for your confidence and self-esteem to, to value that. Yeah. And again, that doesn't take away from what, a, what seems to be a really cute friendship. Cute friendship. Embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah, it's good. Enjoy it. It's great. This is actually far rarer. Yeah. All right. I think we can wrap there. Let's do it. Let's wrap it. Wrap it up real nice. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you can keep Dear Shandy in business by liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, which I feel like people don't do, but you should be doing. I don't even know what the notification bell is. You hit it, and then when a new episode goes up, it shows up in their feed. Oh, that's cool. Their notifications. Nice. Yeah. That, but if you subscribe, doesn't it just show up anyway? I should know the answer to that, but I don't. Okay. If you're curious as to what happens to the question askers oh, yeah. here. Updates. On yeah. These. If you want updates to questions like the ones you heard today, you should be following us on Instagram at Dear Shandy, because we will post updates there more or less on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and in a, in, a, in a nice design in, in the in it the is history. designed which I mean, is not at all an if accident you haven't noticed yeah charlene yeah. likes a good diagonal for the update it's a checkerboard checkerboard right yes i put far too much thought into these things and oh itunes reviews and ratings yep and all the things you would do to support a podcast like ours that if you made it this far you i would say you enjoy yeah. so show your support damn it and on that note, I think we can wrap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.